Okay, now that we've talked a little about the Jack language, it's time to start implementing our compiler. The first thing we're going to do is write a tokenizer. When we first read a file of Jack code, it will just be a string or a list of characters. Tokenizing is the process of finding groups of related characters. Instead of seeing C L A S S space, it is easier for our compiler to think of it as class. In addition to grouping characters together, we will be categorizing each of these groups into categories like keywords, identifiers, and symbols. We will be writing our tokenizer and the rest of our compiler in Elixir. Elixir is a functional language, so the way we structure our code might be different than you're used to, especially if you're mostly familiar with object-oriented languages like Java, Ruby, or C Sharp. In particular, we will be making heavy use of Elixir's pattern matching syntax to help us find groups of related characters, and we will be structuring our tokenizer as a recursive function. Let's start coding. We'll run the mix new command to generate a new Elixir project. We'll call our project Jack Compiler. The first thing we'll do is write a test. Our project was generated with an example test, so we'll just change the contents to be an example of tokenizing a basic Jack class. We'll use the example class we saw on an earlier slide. Now we'll provide a list of tokens that should be generated for that class. There are lots of other examples given in Project 10 that you could use as well. Next we need to figure out how our project will turn the string into tokens. We'll imagine a module called jack.tokenizer that has a tokenize function. Now if we try to run this test, we can see that Elixir tells us that there is no function called tokenize in a jack.tokeners module, so it couldn't run our test. That slash one on the end of the function name is Elixir's way of saying it was trying to find a function that expected just one argument. Let's go implement our tokenize function. First we create our jack.tokenizer module, and then we define a function in our module called tokenize. We know that tokenize should accept a string of Jack code and it should return a list of tokens. The simplest possible string we could accept would be an empty string, and the simplest list we could return would be an empty list. So let's start there. When we talk about recursive functions, we call this simplest possible case the base case. This function is so simple that we can actually write it on one line. Now, when we try to run our test, it finds our new function, but tells us that it can't match the string we tried to pass with the simplest case that it knows how to handle. We can see in this error message that the first part of the string is some spaces. Spaces, new lines, and tabs don't count as tokens in the Jack language. They are only there to make it easier for humans to read. So let's write a rule that says, when you see a space, skip it and try to tokenize the rest of the string after the space. We add this rule by defining another version of our tokenize function. This is where pattern matching comes in. When we have multiple definitions of the same function, Elixir will try to match the argument we pass to a function with one of the definitions we've given it. In this way, we can structure our tokenize function as a list of rules. Elixir will always try to use these rules in the same order we define them, top to bottom. This pattern says, look for a string that starts with a space and capture the rest of the string into a variable called rest. Since the space doesn't count as a token, we just ignore it and try to keep tokenizing the rest of the string. Now we will duplicate this rule to make rules for skipping new lines and tabs. When we run our test, we can see that it has skipped the spaces and it can't match the string that starts with the word class. Now we know what rule we should work on next. We'll copy and paste our last white space rule and make our new rule look for a string that starts with class. When it finds a string starting with class, it will build a list that contains a keyword class token. We'll pass the rest of our string to the tokenize function and glue together its list with the one we just made. There's an easier way to build a list like this in a functional language. We can build a list as a head and a tail. We do this by just putting a pipe between the stuff we want at the front of the list and the list of things we want after it. Now our test says that it can't match Jack. That's where we named our class. Jack is a name or an identifier. The Jack language says that identifiers can be made up of numbers, lowercase letters, uppercase letters, and underscores, but they can't start with the number. So let's write a rule that will look for a string that starts with an identifier. We'll define a new rule and let it match anything that gets passed in. Then we'll run a regular expression on the string to see if it conforms to the rules of an identifier. 
This regular expression will return us a list of matches or a nil if it failed to match the string. So if it fails to match, we'll go ahead and raise an error with a copy of the string that we couldn't match. That way we'll know what to work on next. If it does return us a list of matches, we'll go ahead and make an identifier token and then keep tokenizing the rest of the string afterwards. Now, when we run our test, we can see that it tokenizes up to the first curly brace. Our rules for symbols look just like our rules for the class keyword. If we see a symbol, then we make a list of that symbol plus the tokens from the rest of the string. Now we can duplicate this rule for other symbols like parentheses, semicolons, and periods. Now we can see that that the part of the string we can't tokenize is the string hello. Strings are made up of a quote, then a bunch of characters that aren't quotes or new lines, followed by another quote. We'll make another regular expression that looks for that pattern, and we'll nest it under our regular expression that was looking for identifiers. It would be really handy if we could express these regular expressions as just another rule in our function. But currently, pattern matching only allows for basic types of matching, so we have to handle these cases ourselves. Now, when we run our test, we have tokenized the entire Jack program, but we have accidentally marked some of the keywords as identifiers. It turns out that all of Jack's keywords follow the rules of identifiers, so instead of having a separate set of keyword rules, let's just check what our regular expression found to see if we have a keyword or an identifier. This way we can define the rules of keywords and identifiers in a separate function. This separate function will again use pattern matching to look for the specific cases of keywords, and if it doesn't match any of those, it will call it an identifier. Finally, all of our test passes, and now we have a fully working tokenizer. That was a whirlwind tour of some of Elixir's features. We aren't trying to learn Elixir in depth here, so if it felt a bit fast, that's okay. We mainly want to give you a flavor of what it feels like to write an Elixir program. If you want to look at the code more carefully, you can download the provided code samples. The main thing we should understand from this section is how to use pattern matching to organize a function into prioritized rules, and how those rules make up a recursive function that builds a list of tokens by calling itself over and over. We also saw how to build lists using the head and tail operator, we learned that Jack programs are made up of keywords, symbols, identifiers, and other tokens, and we defined functions using both the long and short form in Elixir. We'll be covering those smaller details again as we move forward with the project. Next up, we will be tackling resolving our identifiers.